Welcome back to History on the Hill here in the Local History Center at the Peninsula Center Library. I'm Monique Sigimoto, the archivist and local history librarian. And I'm Michelle Fricke, an archivist. And this is Sue Tittle. Sue is our volunteer extraordinaire. Um, Sue has been volunteering with the library for how long? Probably going on 10 or 12 years. Well, it's got to be more than that because I've been here for 10 years. And okay. Sue has been... Um, Probably. 12 years. I stole Sue from another department because I wanted her to work in the local history room. Um, so today what we thought we would do for this episode of History on the Hill is to go over how we collect materials for the local history room. And um, part of it starts with this project that we had in 2016 called Your Story is the Peninsula Story. And at this time, we, uh, we discovered that people really wanted to have more materials in the digital repository. Um, you know, we had a lot of stuff from the 1920s and 30s, but we didn't have that much post-World War II. So this is, was an effort to try to do that. Number one was to um, get more materials, but also to engage the community in documenting the history of the community itself. So this was a public scanning event. Um, Sue actually participated in this, so it was really nice to have her on board. And what we did was we asked the community to come in and we um, had a little form for the photographs. They could bring in whatever they wanted um, that was important to them um, to have scanned and to have be put into the digital repository. So people came in, they told us the story, um, they, they had different stations to go to. Um, we, the, the first station was allowing, just authorizing us to use their images. We kept, the next station was to capture the story, the next station was the scanning station, and the last station was a photograph, a commemorative photograph station. Remember when we did that, Sue? I remember it really clearly, and what was so exciting was how people really got into it and they brought all kinds of things. I remember the lady who brought the shells, of course, but then there was a lady who had a whole set of pictures from one of the horse events. Uh -huh. Still ongoing, but these were like from the 50s. Uh -huh. it, was, it was just great. It's a really, really fun event. Um, right yeah. here, you have some of the flyers. Yep. So that you were really, there was a lot of outreach to all different types right. of people There's in the community. Absolutely. So Four languages, five languages. We had um, English, we had Chinese, Japanese, Korean, and also Farsi. So we wrote an invitation letter um, to everybody. So th this was a dear friend or dear community um, letter. We had that translated in multiple languages and then we sent that out um, to the public, you know, letting them know um, of the kickoff event. Um, in January, uh, we did this actually four months in a row, um, and January was our first one. Uh, and at the January event, we also had um, a, a setup, we had a little exhibit. Remember that? We had yes. the exhibit all over the room with lots of materials um, from that, that kind of from this room, um, just to let people know what the local history center was all about. So that was really, um, that was very exciting. And what we thought we'd show you also is kind of an example of some of the materials that came in, right? And Sue, I think you remember Aveto Williams. So this is Aveto Williams right here. She was an unforgettable person that just walked in. Just, um, just came in um, and was really excited um, because she also has an interest in uh, history. She's a, a resident in RPV. Um, and she is also the person with her husband who ran the seashell shop in San Pedro. So say that three times fast. So the, she had a seashell, I knew I was gonna do that. She had a seashell shop, thank you, um, and one called the Sea um, in San Pedro. So this is kind of, these are what they, what, what it looked like. And it was just really interesting because it, the, the shop is no longer there. Um, and they collected seashells from all over the all over the world, which was really interesting. Um, and so we have um, her materials there. Her husband 
um, he also plays very significantly later on, but her husband um, was also really important in creating um, the Ports of Call Village. So I don't know if you remember the that. One, yeah. yeah, the old Ports of Call Village, and of course with San Pedro being redone right now and the, um, and the wharf and the area being redone, this is, we no longer have the, the Ports of Call Village. Yeah, um, Michelle? Right, and yeah. so this happened in 2016. That's right. But And it's something that we like to have people contribute to uh -huh. all the time. That's right. So when I started, I really love to talk to patrons. When uh -huh. they come in, they get their materials and see what we have, and then I encourage them to contribute uh, a story from their life, um, the things that are happening, because history or what's happening right now will be, quote, history yep. in the future. That's exactly right. So well, you might be wondering, so how are we actually doing this now? Um, and COVID was a big kickoff for us. So this, and we did this, um, I think we did seven or six or seven um, in-person events, but COVID, uh, squashed that and because the library was closed um, we could not hold our public scanning events so what we did in the first month of the um, of the pandemic I think it was within three weeks or so we actually launched a website and it's called YSPS online and people can now um, submit their own photographs online so they're not coming in they can they upload their photograph um, and they write the story um, using this online form and then we put that into our digital repository um, when we did this we put out a call to the community to say hey look at this time in history uh, you know nobody has experienced a pandemic and here we are let's document the history of this of what we're experiencing right now. So if you look on um, the YSPS website, you will see a um, pandemic, a corona, pan, coronavirus pandemic collection. Um, and that has quite a few um, photographs on it on just what we were experiencing. It seems a little bit quaint now that we were all at home or we were wearing masks when we were walking, you know, in our neighborhoods. <laughs> Um, or we were all at home because of we couldn't come in to work. Um, it seems kind of surreal, really, um, but we have captured that, um, and we're still continuing to capture that, and we encourage people to submit their stories um, online at the Your Story is the Peninsula Story online form. Um, and you can find it, it's very easy to find. <laughs> it is from the library's website, uh, the local history page. If you go to pvld.org forward slash local history, all one word, um, you can find the, our projects page and there's a link to that um, from that page. Yeah. Oh, I just think it's just such a fabulous uh, program because we can do some people or community members can do something from today or they also can do something from when they were growing up if they mm -hmm. you know happen to move back into the community i mean we kind of i've seen that just over the last couple of months uh -huh. or people that are visiting just because they loved it here and happened to be on a visit to southern california mm -hmm. so yeah i i just I love to see what we're getting and also how it contributes to the collections that we have. Yeah, yeah. And Sue? Um, no, I, it's just, it's so funny. You meet people in the oddest places. I was walking behind my house on the path and I met a neighbor who I've talked to casually. I didn't realize his background was so interesting. He had grown up on the peninsula and he remembered before all the grading was done for the homes in, uh, outside homes in Torrance. And they used to go just down to, there were like um, where Best Buy is today was a grocery store. Mm -hmm. And they used to go down there to buy stuff. And he, re he remembers that. And it's, he's not, he's younger than me. So it's fairly, fairly recent here. Mm -hmm. So, um, but you never know where you're going to run into people like mm -hmm. that. Right. And what's really important is that it's these different pieces together which weaves the story of the community and you know and of the Palos Verdes Peninsula. It's a contribution from Iveta, um, who is talking about the seashell shop. Um, Iveta also contributed a photograph of the 1933 earthquake um, and in Long Beach, where the building is completely or is, is falling apart, um, and the sunken city in San Pedro. 
Um, so we get all of these different pieces and each one of them contributes in a different way. This yeah. is from the Long Beach earthquake in 1933. Um, I guess it prompted a lot of building code revisions because houses just slid off their foundations. And it's pretty horrible. A, a really good point about, yeah. um, you know, that these natural, um, you know, disasters or these events uh, trigger changes um, in our community. Yeah. Yep. I mean, just like the, the 1970s fire that happened in uh, Portuguese Bend, uh, that is what changed fire codes, or people were very much interested in changing the fire codes so that you wouldn't have a wood shake roof, which would contribute to, um, you know, if there was a fire. Um, that's why we don't have wood shake roofs any longer. The Los Angeles River, uh -huh. it used to just flood and devastate everything, so they concrete channelized it. Now everybody kind of wants to go back. Um, you know, another interesting thing, an outcome actually of our YSPS event um, was that the same donor who came in, Iveta, uh, she actually donated some materials um, from her own private collection. And that's what's in this gray box here. <laughs> I know the gray box, or it just looks like a, a, a box with uh, this metal corrugated thing on the side, but the box is full of the history of people who lived in our community. But it's not just the pe of their own lives, but it's also their lives during an important part of US history, um, which is World War II. Um, so we thought we would just kind of pull some of these materials out to show you, you know, what some, some sampling uh, materials that came out of this or that are in this collection. I'm sorry, I, I had one photo, one, one thing out here, which I, this is just a um, rough, uh, right now we haven't actually processed the collection, which means we, we've just put it into folders and we haven't described it. So we just have ballpark um, materials, but this is a photograph um, of a, let's see, it's of uh, the uh, of, of the peninsula, but you can. It, it's truly just amazing. Here, I want I want to show you um, this photograph. So this is um, approved for U.S. Navy um, release. So it's a really interesting um, photograph of you know what the Maybe peninsula like. Yeah, development. there's no development on the peninsula. You know, at that time, but probably one of the. Uh, really interesting things that has come out of this collection though are letters that Iveta's husband, this is before they were married, that her husband wrote to his mother um, during World War II. So these are letters home, you know, from a soldier um, to his mother and it just describes, he's describing his life, she's just, you know, uh, he's responding to things that she has said to him, uh, you know, during, uh, in one of the, in one of the letters and they're just really interesting. I mean, you can follow where he where he is. He's at Camp Roberts in some of them. This one, he's actually at Camp Roberts right now. But just going through the, you know, through the letters, um, you know, he says, Dear Mom, and you know, you can kind of see his, his writing. He was a young fellow at this time. Um, you know, Dear Mom, I got to Camp OK Monday morning at 4 a.m., but didn't uh, get any sleep because I had, uh, I, I don't know what this is, I had a table waiter? I don't know. I didn't come back to the car. I went down in because I didn't show, because I didn't show up. I had plenty of offers for rides. One guy had two cars just like ours and I came with him. We have had an easy week so far, except for the heat and long hours. We have had two nights two night problems um, that were supposed to be eight hours. Um, we cut them down uh, to four so we could get in at about 12 both nights. And we have had two mornings off because the schedule calls for time off for eight hour uh, night problems. We don't know what this refers to. I would like to have you send me um, one of those good maps of Europe that we got with the, with the National Geographic so I can keep up with the war. I will, I, I will be lucky if I get a pass a week from this Saturday, but I will try to work it some way. The avocados were here when I got back. What does the avocados mean? What do you think that is? 
I don't know, because he's at Camp Roberts. Um, one was squashed, one was too ripe, and one was okay. <laughs> the, cookies, the cookies came Monday and were good, especially when I came in from the night problem. Um, I will write again soon, as I have some time, Dick. So, I wonder what the night problem is. I don't know. Maybe it was like the night shift. Um, I think, yeah, I don't know. Oh. Were they not allowed to talk about these things? Maybe, yeah. yeah, maybe not. Yeah. But these are, uh, you know, you get um, an idea. I mean, I think he must have gotten, now that we're looking at the avocados uh, and the cookies, the, his mother must have sent, sent that box, to him, yeah. sent a box to him, you know, to Camp Roberts. Um, but you get this idea of, you know, what camp life was like. Um, and I mean, there's actually two or three folders of these letters um, in which he's talking. I think we read one the other day where he was on the ship um, and not able to sleep. Remember that one that we saw? That was a really um, interesting one. Yeah, it was a, that was a really tough one. These are so relatable Yeah, because they're an ordinary person's view of the preparations for war and going to war. And yep. Exactly. Fortunately coming home safely. And fortunately coming home safely and running a shell shop in um, right. uh, in San Pedro. Right, right. So, and these were also part of the donation that Iveta um, gave us, which were, um, you know, the, the dog tags, which is also um, interesting. And actually, um, I was a little bit surprised we were looking at this the other day. What was the Abalone Shore Club in Portuguese Bend? But there was a club there and, and he was uh, a member of the Abalone Shore Club. Have you ever heard of the Abalone Shore Club? Mm -hmm. I haven't heard of the, how about you? Have you heard of the Abalone Shore Club? No. No, no yeah. It's amazing. And patches. So just to kind of get an idea of what you know, of what is... This is an amazing mm. wow. It's, I mean, I think it's just kind of a nice little representation of that time period yeah. um, that people don't really get to see. No. And thankfully, you know, Look she saved this. Um, and, you know, the, in, and also in addition to the letters, we have um, in here the ration cards that were used at the time. Oh gosh, I'll have to pull these out. Oh, here they are. So these are the ration books um, where you had, you only got to, you know, you had to um, buy things or you were limited to how much you could spend. There was gas rationing, sugar rationing, sugar. Yeah. sugar. I remember my mother talking about sugar rationing. I have never seen a ration book. She talked about it all the time. You've never seen a ration book? Never. Look at the ration book. Okay. I mean, you have to look at the ration book. <laughs> oh, that's what it looks like. And wow. that's what your mother was dealing with. Right. Sugar was a big deal. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, and here's all the little, uh, the little, she didn't use them all up. She did the, not wow. use up all of her cards. But as we are now, fast forward to 2022, Amazing. and we are talking about gas yeah. <laughs> and yeah. issues with that. This is kind of um, an interesting um, artifact from uh, from that time period. And particularly when um, for students are in school, if someone's doing a report and wants to see what it looks, what it authentically looks like versus a picture in a book, yeah. they're welcome to come to the local history center and see, see them. And also letters, we do email all the time now. And we're not used to getting a personal letter. In yes. The mail. And, and who does? Exactly. So and and I think that's another thing that people don't uh, or that's important to uh, to stress or to point out is that, um, you know, we, we do have a rich history here on the peninsula. Um, World War Two might have been happening um, elsewhere. But I think as we have seen with our uh, the 40 families and the Japanese farming history on the peninsula, it was happening here as well. And it was um, the, you know, our young men and women who were um, partaking um, in it. And, um, and this is a way for people to kind of learn about it. And to, this is evidence of what was happening on a very personal level, like you said, Sue. Yeah. Speaking of World War II, um, you know, we, we have this, and I just really wanted to stress that it's, it's a gray box and it looks so nondescript. 
but it's chock full of histories and stories of people and our community uh, and the country. I mean, just sitting in this one little box. Um, and as, as World War II, um, Sue actually participated in a project that we did um, right before right the pandemic, before the pandemic yeah. right before the pandemic, um, to commemorate the uh, passage of the 19th Amendment, securing a woman's right to vote. And Sue, actually, well, Sue, why don't you tell us what you did? Okay, so more broadly, what we did was we wanted to see women, because history, you know, is largely about men and men's things they do, but it's women, of course, hold up half the sky. And so we wanted to see the women on the peninsula who were significant figures that you might not know about or might not know about today. And there is a whole box, another nondescript gray box, <laughs> yes. that has a treasure trove of interviews with people, and they go back, what, 25 years? It, oh, oh, more than that. I think they go back to the 70s. So many of the people are no longer with us, but their stories are, and they're fascinating. And one of the women that I ran across, and I was particularly taken by her story because I can walk by her house every day. It's still standing. She That's no right. longer lives there, but um, her name was Alice Deerschmidt, and she was the wife of the foreman of the um, diatomaceous earth mine on Butcher Hill, and they built this house in 1938, I think, in Valmonte, which then was just, you know, there was nothing around, and she didn't drive, right? And it was a hardship for her to get to the store to get her groceries, so her husband says, well, I'll let you learn how to drive if you can do the mechanics on the car because cars were very prone to break down then. And so Alice was a kind of a plucky woman and she did that and she got her driver's license. And then World War II came and she got very involved in driving around the peninsula to uh, make sure people had their blackout curtains because that, I guess, was very important in the peninsula at that time so that any submarine, any enemy submarine coming along the coast couldn't spot the houses. So she did that. She also was very involved in um, soldier, um, greeting the soldiers when they came to Fort MacArthur and sending them off with things like socks, whatever, and um, baking cookies when they would come back. And so she really put that driver's license to good use. And all of this is in her oral history. It was just, it was just fascinating. Yeah, I, it, it's really, it is fascinating because it speaks to her, yes. but it also speaks to what was happening on the peninsula at that time. And it was an individual's view, just how she remembered it is why I think it's so powerful. Yeah, yep, and um, so that's a, another type of resource that we have. Right. It is not a photograph. Um, it is actually the words, um, right. the voice, of the person, which is extraordinary when you think about it. Um, I, I don't know. I do. We often think, you know, the pictures. We, we see pictures, and those speak to us. But when you actually hear the person's words, yeah. uh, it, that's just really amazing to be able to have that. So that's that's really a fun one. So one of the things that I'd also like to let you know about um, the Your Story is the Peninsula Story um, project, um, also during the pandemic. Um, the Palos Verdes Arts Center celebrated its 90th year. So from 1931 to 2021, um, that's how long our Arts Center here on the peninsula has been going on. And they asked us to create, since we had an online form, a special landing page where people w could contribute their own photographs um, to document the history of the Arts Center. So it's a really interesting kind of extension of the uh, YSPS story. I mean, in addition to um, contributing to the Arts Center, and of course the Arts Center would have those, those also became part of the Local History Center's digital repository so that we can document um, you know, the history of, our, of a really important local institution, um, the Arts Center. Um, people may not know that the Arts Center and the library were very closely connected um, you know, when, from the beginning. Um, so this is actually quite interesting. Um, so if you're interested in that, again, you can go to that same website um, and take a look at the uh, PVAC at 90 um, uh, you know, landing page to, to contribute to that. It will be part of the digital repository. Um, and you may be wondering, why do I have this little gadget in front of me? 
Um, this little device here is called a flip pal. Um, unfortunately, they don't sell these things anymore, but you can check one out from the library. Um, and what this is, is a little mini scanner. <laughs> So it has this little scanning, it has this little um, scanning bed on it. Um, you put your photograph on there and it has a little button on the side um, and you can scan your photographs. Um, and you can check this out for free with your library card here at the library. The way it works is a little USB key and you transfer it from this device to a computer and then you, um, and then you have a digital uh, version of your photograph. Now you may be wondering why is it called a flip pal? That is because you can take the top off of your flip pal and you can turn this over and you can actually scan overlapping areas um, if you have a larger item to create and you can stitch it all together to create an exact scan of your larger item. So these are available um, at the Peninsula Center Library if you'd like to, to check one out. All you need is your library card. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode today of History on the Hill. We want to thank our volunteer and guest, Sue, for joining us today. Sue? <laughs> I just want to put in a plug for volunteering at the library in general, and in particular in the local history room. I, we were talking about how long I've volunteered here, and it's like gone so fast, I can't believe it. It's just a fascinating place to work. You meet the most remarkable people, and you can read about the most remarkable things. And they all happen right here in your backyard. <laughs> right here in our backyard. Michelle, Michelle, you want to have any closing comments for our topic today? Just I just think that uh, your story, Peninsula story, is just a fabulous uh, project that's constantly going on and really has so, we've seen today the depth of what it offers on many different levels. And again, that's just so much of what this room is about in the history of the peninsula and we're just welcome to have you visit anytime. Thanks Michelle and uh, thanks Sue also it was great to, to, to do this again um, and we thank you for uh, sharing part of your time with us today and we look forward to seeing you again on another episode of History on the Hill. Take care. <laughs>